Namaskaram Sadhguru. There are many shrines in ashram where I have seen uh, your uh, footprints engraved in stone. And similar I have seen at uh, my friend's place as well. So uh, are, I wanted to ask if are these uh, your footprints and uh, <laughs> what is the significance of having it at one's home? I'm not that heavy that I... When I walk, I leave footprints on the stone <laughs> You know, in this culture, in this civilization, we've looked at the human body, not just for its physiology, but for its energetic physiology. In yoga, as there is a physical body, there is a mental body and an energy body. Pranamaya kosha, it's called. So pranamaya kosha can be in many different ways. Out of these seventy to thousand nadis, even if a little over twenty percent is active, you can live fine. Nobody will know anything wrong with you. That's how wonderfully this is structured. If you're getting twenty percent mark, you still pass. <laughs> this happened. Shankaran Pillai was taking an exam in the United States. And uh, he's in an entry level exam for MSc in mathematics. But <laughs> A little, nothing much, he's not studied for this. So when he gave the test paper, he pinned a hundred dollar bill <laughs> to the paper and wrote, one dollar for every mark, <laughs> hundred out of hundred. So, when the test results came, the papers came back, he opened, dollars fell down. He had pinned only one, one bill, but many notes fell down. He picked it up and counted, it was seventy-three and the marks. <laughs> so, <laughs> the energetic body is such, that even just a little over seven, twenty percent is active, you will live a complete life. Neither you will know, nor anybody else will know anything wrong with you. Fantastic, isn't it? What a gift! A twenty percent functionality, you'll feel you're fine. So what is the remaining eighty percent for out of these seventy-two thousand nadis? What are they doing? There are many, many aspects of it, let me not go, let's just come to the feet. So if you've activated your energies in a certain way, this is true even if you have not. <coughs> your hands, palms and souls are always very active energy-wise. You will have much more intimacy with somebody just by holding hands, rather than doing many other physical things. Just holding hands binds you like that because energetically there is a certain closeness in holding hands. Actually, when there is lust, there will be sexuality. When there is love, generally holding hands. Yes? Because even if you don't know anything about these things, Instinctively you know this is how you feel closest. This is why in this culture when we greet somebody, hands coming together does fantastic things. But instead of you being twenty... twenty-seven percent age, <laughs> if you are closer to over ninety percent age or hundred percent or at least let's say ninety plus, then your hands and feet have completely different capabilities. It is from this context, this has come, that 
any sage, saint, yogi, anybody, you don't know nothing about him, but if somebody says he's a saint, you go and fall at his feet in this culture because you want to grab something. From there, we have come to this, that anybody elderly means you touch their feet, father, mother, whoever else. Generally, in ancient India, people became worthy if they were nothing, if they have not achieved anything in the, within themselves. People became worthy of being, you know, bowed down to only after they've completed five solar cycles, which is your approximately sixty years of age. Because by then life matures in a certain way, your energies have moved out of certain other areas of your body and little more concentrated in your hands and feet. So, the culture identified this and says, if there is an elderly person, you must touch their feet because there is a benefit. If there is somebody, a yogi, a saint, a sage or whatever you recognize as, you touch their feet. Or if you see a deity, you go touch their feet. You, you don't go hug a deity and kiss it, <laughs> all right? You go touch their feet because that's where maximum receptivity or giving is there. So in that context, the feet or the imprint of the feet is created in different ways. You must talk to people who have these sanities at home, what it means to them and what it's done to them. The important aspect of it is something that would normally not be available to you physically, where you live, it is available to you. Otherwise, you'll have to go in search of that to a temple or some other place, but it's alive in your own house because it's consecrated in a certain way. Well, there are stone imprints with uh, sacred ash filled in that, they're consecrated in a certain way. There is another one which is copper or brass foot, which is also consecrated. There's another one which is much more alive. If you want to use sanadi like a temple in your house, not just for you, for people to come and, you know, experience that, then you put something like that. <laughs>